Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about NPC hybrid setups. Not your traditional setup of an NPC, but a hybrid setup. Usually involves an audio interface and or a computer. So traditionally, someone who just bought an NPC would probably use this as a strictly sample-based machine. You know, you load up your drums, uh, you load up samples that you might sample from either a synthesizer or a, a record or something. You chop up your audio, make some beats, boom, that's your traditional setup that a lot of people just stick with when it comes to NPC. You could take it one step further and use the NPC as a sequencing platform. So you could do your drum uh, samples and then also control outboard hardware synthesizers with an NPC and just treat that as MIDI. And then typically what would happen is you'd have a uh, mixing board off to the side that would then get the audio from the NPC and whatever synthesizers or additional audio production instruments you have hooked up. So I want to talk about the first hybrid method, which involves using the audio interface. Now this is interesting because if you like the NPC platform and if you like working with the plugins and all that that are on the MPC, then this kind of bridges the gap of using hardware synthesizers and connecting them directly into the software of the MPC. So let me explain. So off to my side, I have a RME Fireface UCX2 audio interface hooked up to the MPC. Now that is an expensive audio interface, so you don't have to have something like that, but I chose it because it's technically one of the more stable audio interfaces, and it has a decent amount of inputs and outputs uh, that you can work with on there. And now in the MPC, I went over to the audio device and I set it as 32 inputs and outputs, and I have it selected as RME Fireface. So that's like step number one, and most people are gonna be aware of this if they've been using the MPC. Now where this gets interesting is taking the outputs directly into your audio interface, like the RME, and then processing them inside the MPC. So my first track right here, if I go over to MIDI, and I select the MIDI port, I currently have the Microfreak, uh, and I have the Mini Freak, and the Peak, all hooked up via USB. So I have a single USB hub connected directly to the MPC that is then connecting the synthesizers through MIDI, USB, and also the audio USB connection with the RME. So one port is connecting all those. But what I'm showing on here is I can now select, say, the Mini Freak. And if I play the Mini Freak, you'll see this stuff is lighting up. Now you're not hearing any kind of um, information in there. And the reason for that is it's not being monitored inside the MPC software. So first step, what we got to do is go over to the audio tracks. So I'm going to just set these up right now. So track one, we're going to call this the Micro Freak. And again, we're in audio tracks right now, not MIDI, audio tracks. Very important distinction right there because they are handled completely separately inside the box, even though the sequence will still consider them both having their own data when you switch sequences and all that. But track one audio is different from track one of the uh, MIDI. So first track I labeled Micro Freak. And then what I'm going to do over here in the inputs, I'm going to grab the input that is the Microfreak, which I know I inputted into number three right there. Now, if I play this right here, you'll see I'm getting audio information. Now, in order to hear it, I just hit input. So now I'm actually monitoring the audio that's coming out of there. Now, the Microfreak doesn't have any effects on there. Well, now we can easily fix that with this setup. Before we do that, though, I'm going to add the peak and the mini freak so we don't get too far ahead. So I'm going to do another track. Right here, we'll we'll call this Mini Freak. And the Mini Freak, I believe, is 5-6. No, it's 7-8. Now we need another track, so I'm gonna hit plus track. We'll call this Peak. And input is 5-6. Let's audition it. Yeah, I'm getting information right there. So let's uh, monitor this. Okay, go to the second track and monitor the Freak. So we're now listening to the audio from these synthesizers as if it was a mixer or a digital mixer, because that's kind of what we're doing right here. We're taking the MPC software and treating it like a digital mixer in the box. So now we're back to the MIDI tracks right here. And on track one, I have the MIDI Freak. Uh, so I can actually record MIDI and then I'm still hearing it and all that. I'm gonna cut up a drum sample real quick so we have like a click. Shout out to Stolen Drums, awesome samples. All right, so I chopped up a sample, made a beat real quick, sauce it up. So we got this right now. Now, if I go over to say like, let's say track five, let's say uh, MIDI right here, go to the Micro Freak. If I play, I'm gonna turn down the Mini Freak so I don't hear the Mini Freak on the actual keyboard itself. So I'm gonna uh, treat it as if I'm just using this as a MIDI controller. And as you can see, I'm not hearing any sound right now. The reason is I have my MIDI channel wrong. It's on MIDI channel two. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna record some right here. Okay, 
So let's mute the drums. So this synthesizer has no effects. If you're unaware of Microfreak, it's basically just like a basic uh, synthesizer that's really powerful and interesting and a lot of like cool things you can do with it, but there's no effects in terms of reverb, delay, phaser, chorus, or anything like that. You're not getting that in there. So we could do that inside the MPC. And this is where I really like this type of uh, setup right here is being able to actually apply the plugins and the effects and stuff inside the MPC real time with the hardware, right? Like that sounds really cool. Or at least I think it sounds cool. So let's go over here. Let's uh, initially throw air vintage filter. Let's throw one of those on first. So let's hit play. Now it's currently got an LFO going on with that, which is interesting, but uh, I'm gonna turn the LFO completely down for now. So we're gonna leave it a little crunchy right there. Let's throw air delay pro on there, which I really like this plugin. Now, just off the first preset, obviously we're getting a lot of like interesting spatial texture and all that, which is really cool. Let's take it one step further and throw Air Flavor Pro on there. Now drop the pitch down, bring up the top end. I'm also gonna turn down the gain boost that happens with that. I'm going to vinyl, get rid of the noise and the clicks and pops. I do like the uh, crack a little bit. Turn the rate down. Uh, distortion, let's give it some of that. Let's give it vinyl distortion. So turn all these off. Pristine, you know, interesting sounding synth sound. Turn it on. So track five, Micro Freak, let's go on to track six and do the peak. Or actually we need a bass. And instead of using a hardware synth, I was thinking we could use the Mini D inside the MPC software because is another really cool thing about this now. Like you have the Jura and you got the Mini D. If you've purchased those plugins, obviously they're separate plugins, so you'd have to pay money for them. If you do have them in your system, I think they're great bread and butter synthesizers to throw stuff in here just to have stuff filled out and leave your hardware synthesizers to maybe do some more interesting patches. So in the Mini D, I chose Mini Thump for a preset right here. I think I'm gonna do like a low kind of growl type of thing. call that mini D. Now let's move on to the peak. Name this track peak as well. We'll go over to MIDI tracks, say MIDI port, say the peak. Now let's find a patch. She encounters is kind of cool. I'm going to double the sequence length so I have uh, more room to kind of play with on this. I'm going to take off timing correction completely. All right, so we got something with the peak and now with the mini freak, we could either sequence it or we could just play it live. Because I'm already directly playing the MIDI Freak, I don't have to set up the MIDI port just yet. So sometimes what I do is just record the MIDI first and then I set it to the actual uh, keyboard that I'm playing when it comes to the MPC. Set this to the mini freak. So 
So I'm gonna save this project real quick. It's 2024, by the way. This is the first video that I'm recording of 2024, so Happy New Year. Pretty straightforward so far. Basically, you're monitoring the instruments through the MPC software with it hooked up as an audio interface. Now, to take it one step further, what you can do, and what I like to do with uh, when making like hardware performances, you can actually take your sequence and basically convert it into a long form sequence. So if you are gonna make some changes, like a B section or a middle section or something like that, and some add some nuances throughout your tracks, you would program all that stuff and then sequence a master song sequence. And let's say that sequence is like, um, 150 bars, I don't know, maybe 200 bars, something like that. What you would do from that point is you would actually go to the tracks and you would arm all the tracks uh, by holding shift like this. You can arm it like that and you can actually record the audio tracks as you play your sequence throughout the 150, 200 plus bars in there. So essentially you're capturing all the nuance of your instruments inside the MPC like this. I've done this before. It works out pretty well. I haven't talked about the caveats yet, and we're about to get to there. So I'm not sure if you've heard while I've been playing this, but there might have been a few clicks and pops that's happened while doing this. And this is something that is unfortunate when it comes to the MPC hardware currently. I don't think it can truly support multiple channels of audio with an audio interface without introducing some clicks and pops. I believe that the buffer size is just permanently set, and I think it's a little too low for what the internal software of the MPC needs to process multiple audio tracks. I've actually used all eight audio tracks before in this type of setup, and it starts clicking and popping. And the more effects you start adding to the audio tracks, the more this will start kind of becoming more apparent as, you, as you're playing. And it will be very obvious if you're playing pads. So anything that's not very percussive, you'll start hearing these clicks and pops kick in more and more as you go by if you start loading up the track count. So caveat number one is you have to use an audio interface and it tends to add clicks and pops depending on the track count size that you start adding. Caveat number two is that you're limited to eight audio tracks. So if you have more than eight synthesizers or instruments that you're gonna be capturing at any given time, you know, like a vocalist, guitar, bass, plus synthesizers, you're only gonna be able to have eight tracks total right there. So you have to keep that in mind. And again, as you pump up the track count, it seems to cause more stress on the CPU. So the answer to some of these problems actually does exist already, but you have to use a computer. So I can actually take this entire setup and switch over to MPC software, and it kind of fixes some of this stuff while still maintaining uh, the essence of the same setup. So let me do that real quick. So I saved this project already. I'm gonna go into my preferences and go into controller mode right here. Now with one single cable, I'm able to take this and plug it into the computer and basically have access to all the same stuff that was going on there, in addition to having the MPC plugged in as well. So the MPC Live 2 is now in controller mode, and as you can see, the screen turned back on as soon as I opened up the MPC software. That's great, right? Now I'm gonna open up the same project, and hopefully everything works. So, let's see. And unfortunately, we're still getting clicks and pops. <laughs> <laughs> now, in order to solve a bit of this, we can pump up the buffer size. So as it is right now with the Fireface, now this is in class compliant mode. So I don't have the driver loaded up for the Fireface, which would definitely make it run better with the Macintosh OS, but it's not gonna fix it much because what I've found, and I've used a lot of different audio interfaces with the current uh, MPC software, it's just not optimized enough. So I just bumped up the buffer size to 512. You know, I'm missing my peak. Oh, peak is just peak. So it's not always perfect when you plug it into another system, but this technique though isn't too shabby considering that you can actually just take basically one hub, USB hub, and transfer the majority of your stuff over if you are working like this. And as you can see, bumping up that buffer size to 512 definitely helped. The problem is your buffer size is 512, which means that anything you perform later on with the computer setup is definitely gonna have uh, the latency of being 512 buffer size. So it's unfortunate. But like I said, I've done a lot of experiments with different audio interfaces with this type of setup, and basically all of them have issues with low buffer sizes when it comes to the MPC software. So Akai, if you're listening, your software could definitely use some fine tuning in this department to make it more 
copacetic <laughs> with the various audio interfaces out there. Because what this does really is like eliminate a lot of those limitations I was talking about. You do have to activate the plugins twice. For instance, because I have Mini D on here and Air Flavor Pro, having them activated on the software version means you're taking up a second activation. It's kind of annoying. And especially if you have multiple NPCs, you kind of run out of those activations really fast. And there's no convenient system to kind of kick an activation off and reactivate another. You have to actually go into each device, deactivate it, and then you can reactivate it on the other device, which is unfortunate. I wish they would change that to if whatever system requests an activation, it would just kick the oldest one. I wish that would be the case with it, but as it is right now, it doesn't do that. But with the software, same type of thing, you can arm all your audio tracks and basically record your entire performance of, you know, like 150, 200 bar, a type of jam or track and then you could take that and mix it in a different platform if you want or mix it in the mpc software if that's what you're choosing to do the other thing that the computer hybrid setup also offers is that you can then load up reverbs from other companies that are really good like your valhalla dsp type of reverbs and delays because one thing that is a glaring omission that's happening inside the mpc platform is a super deluxe delicious reverb does not exist. You know, we got Air Delay Pro this past year, which I'm very thankful for. And then Air released Aether or Ether, whatever it is, which I thought was going to be on the NPC. Hasn't been released on there. So maybe the hardware just can't support it. But that being said, the Jura came with a really nice reverb, at least in my opinion, it's a really nice reverb. And I would love to see that reverb inside the Jura ported out into like a separate plugin that I could add into various things because like the basic reverbs that are, that are inside the NPC, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of them. Maybe you have better experience with them, but for me personally, I have not had the same success. I'm almost always keeping things relatively dry aside from the Air Delay Pro and then adding reverb later on in like a mixing environment on like Ableton Live or something like that. By the way, if you're planning on picking up any of the gear that is on the desk right here, or if you're gonna get a new NPC or audio interface or anything like that, if you use our affiliate links through Zounds below, it helps out the channel. We get a commission at no additional cost to you and it directly supports the channel as well. And also Zounds is awesome. We've been using them for years and they're our go-to retailer when it comes to music gear acquisition type of stuff. Highly recommended right there. So let's wrap things up here. Obviously the hybrid setup is not gonna be for everyone. Uh, if you already have a sample based NPC setup that you really like, more power to you, don't stop doing what you're doing. I'm just highlighting some scenarios that may be interesting for people that do have multiple pieces of gear in the studio that you might wanna connect together. I really like the NPC platform, the modern day version right now, and I really like what it has to offer for kind of bringing a whole bunch of stuff in the studio together. Now, would I do this all the time? Not necessarily. In fact, I'm still currently using a, uh, a traditional MPC sequencing other instruments and then sending those to a separate mixer type of setup. That's still one of my preferred methods. But that is gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Also, thanks for making it to the end as well. I know this is gonna be a relatively long one. And again, Happy New Year. Hope your 2024 turns out fantastic. Wishing you much success in this year. But that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time for another one. Peace.